Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I thought that today I would share my beautiful Valentine's flowers with you and um, set my computer up in this pretty area of my house with plants because I don't know about you, but I find winter in Michigan to get a little gloomy sometimes and I like being around the pretty things that make me happy. And that's one of the things I like about Valentine's Day is that it involves usually flowers, which are so nice in the middle of winter to see, and chocolate, which I like. So I hope you guys are being able to enjoy some of those things too. So I'm sure you knew that this week is Valentine's Day, but I wonder if you also knew, I bet you do, that this month is Black History Month, where we uh, especially remember the, um, the black Americans who have made amazing contributions to our history in America and who often have not, their stories have not been told um, to all of us uh, enough. And so Black History Month is a way that we can start to hear the stories of black Americans that we need to know about. And you can see that I have a picture here of a really special person. His name is Absalom Jones, and I want to talk about him because um, it's important, really important for Christians, uh, for us to know our story. And in America, our story is really, really involved with black Americans or with African Americans. And some parts of that story um, are really sad in ways that um, white Christians um, throughout the history of our country have used and abused black Americans. And parts of that history are beautiful in terms of learning about black Christians who have followed Jesus so faithfully and who are such a wonderful witness to us of God's um, God's goodness and God's call on our lives. And so um, Absalom Jones is a great witness to us, a great, what, um, what some people would call a saint. And uh, really when we talk about saints, we mean um, a follower of Jesus. And often when we talk about that, we mean someone who has died. And Absalom Jones, you can tell from his old fashioned clothes here, right? That he lived a really long time ago that he is a saint. He's someone that we remember as a Christian who lived really faithfully and whose story we should know to encourage us as Christians. And so before I talk about Absalom Jones' story, I want to read to you from my Bible, from the book of Hebrews, which if you look, you can see is getting very near the end of the Bible. We don't know who the author of the book of Hebrews is, but this was a person who wrote to the early church, the churches that started up you know, not too many years after Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. So these young churches were trying to figure out what it meant to live faithfully as followers of Jesus. And in chapter 12 of Hebrews, verses 1 through 3, we read this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners that you will not grow weary and lose heart. And so I just want to point out today that it's important to hear the stories of the people who are part of that great cloud of witnesses that the, this verse talks about, um, because there are so many people who have loved and followed Jesus who give for us an example of, a, of the people who for the joy set before them, endured their own form of the cross, tremendous suffering, scorning its shame because they trusted in God. And, you know, talking about Jesus, these verses say, consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary 
and lose heart. And so the story of Absalom Jones is very much the story of one who did not grow weary and, or lose heart, but continued to press forward, even though they were opposed by sinners, which this is one of those heartbreaking beats, um, heartbreaking bits of our Christian history in America. The sinners he was opposed by were the leaders of Christian churches in his day. And so we're gonna hear about that in his story. But let's listen um, to Absalom's story and hear his witness for us of courageous Christ following. So Absalom Jones was born in 1746, which is a really long time ago, right? That's like 280 some years ago, really long time ago. And as I'm sure you know, in America, back in those days, black Americans or Americans who were of African descent, who had been brought from Africa or whose ancestors had been brought from Africa to be sold as slaves, they were not treated with dignity and respect in America. In the South, um, many of those black Americans were abused and used as slaves. And even in the North where maybe in some places they could be free, they were still treated terribly and kept in conditions that uh, really did not equal freedom. So things were not good in America for um, Americans of African descent back in the days of Absalom Jones. So he was born into slavery in Delaware. And when he was 16 years old, um, his the people who were his family's so-called owners, because you can't under God actually own another human being. So we're not gonna call them his owners because that is just not true. But they sure, acted like that was true and they sold Absalom and his brothers and sisters to all different people which is a terrible terrible thing to even imagine and so Absalom's new owners took him away from his family and took him to Philadelphia which is in Pennsylvania that's in the north but apparently because they bought him in the south they still considered him a slave so he was in the north in Philadelphia but he was a slave but Absalom Jones was um, someone who was very um, intelligent and very studious. And so he would work as a slave in, in his um, owner's, his so-called owner's shop all day. And then he would go to school, to the only school he was allowed to go to, which was only black people could go there. Um, he would go to that school at night. And so he learned a lot and worked very, very hard to get an education. And he managed to get books um, to learn how to read and to write. So um, he was just very hungry for knowledge. Then in 1770, he married an enslaved woman named Mary King. And he saved up his money, even though he was a slave, he saved up enough money to buy her freedom so that she could be free and so that their children would be free. And then um, in later years, he was able to actually save up enough money to buy his own freedom. So then he and his wife lived in Philadelphia and they were free. And he and his family went to church in Philadelphia. They went to a church called St. George's Methodist Episcopal Church. And that church decided that they were going to make um, Americans of African descent or African Americans sit in a separate area of the church. That's called segregation, right? So the leaders of the church decided to segregate the black Americans. But the problem was Absalom Jones and his friend Richard Allen, who is another saint that we should know about, and hopefully I can tell you his story at some point, they were so effective at sharing the gospel, at telling the good news of our freedom and equality in Christ and the good news of uh, God's salvation that's available to us, that many, many, many African Americans became believers and they um, started coming to this church. So pretty soon there were way more African-Americans in this church 
than they were white Americans. And so it was ridiculous for them to all try to crowd up into the balcony while down in the main part of the church, only white people were allowed, but there weren't enough of them. So one day, Absalom and his African-American uh, friends, these other leaders, decided to sit in the main part of the church. Um, and so the church ushers picked him up and dragged him to the back of the church. And so Absalom and the other African Americans left that church and they never went back. And they started their own church called the African Episcopal Church of St. Thomas. And that church is still there in Philadelphia today. So Absalom and his African American friends uh, helped people. They started a club to help people in need and started a school for African American children. And when a serious uh, sickness struck the people of Philadelphia, many people ran away from the city, but Absalom and his friends stayed to help care for the sick. So eventually Absalom Jones became a priest in the Episcopal Church. And actually because of um, his amazing story of faith and perseverance, he, uh, became, he is considered a saint in the Episcopal Church and Episcopalians, which is a different kind of group of Christians than what we are, but they actually have given him a special day that they celebrate his memory. And guess what day it is? February 13th, which is today, which is kind of cool because I was planning to tell you his story today before I even knew that this is his special day in the Episcopal Church. So, um... That's what I want you to know about him. And there's a lot more to know, and I wish I could tell you more about him, but I'm gonna end with another Bible verse. And this is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 12 through 15. Jesus said, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. So I am grateful that Absalom Jones was a friend of God and that as a friend of God, he knew that uh, he was free and he knew that he could do bold and brave things like he did and he knew that he could serve courageously like he did. Um, and I'm glad that I can know and you can know that we're friends of God too. And um, because of that, even though it feels really bad, like it feels bad in my stomach to know that white Christians in the history of America have been terribly um, wicked to black Americans. I can know that I don't have to run away from that truth because I know that God uh, loves me. And so that means that I can spend some time really learning about what we need to learn in order to be different and to do better um, and to follow Jesus' example as brothers and sisters in love. So I hope you enjoyed hearing that story today. Bye.